Oh, it's too early for this. Welcome back. It is 5.30 in the morning. I couldn't sleep, so I thought, why not shoot a YouTube video? And I filmed probably 10 minutes and realized that my microphone didn't link to the camera. So let's start this again, because that happens sometimes. Let's get into it. <laughs> I, I keep checking on the audio because now I'm paranoid it's going to die again. For today's video, I want to start something new that I haven't done before. The idea for this came from previous videos. Inevitably, when I make a video where I create a project, or I am trying to do an engraving or cutting of some sort, I inevitably get asked, what settings am I using? And the reality is, going into the project, unless it's acrylic or wood, I usually have no idea. I don't know what they are to start with. I typically don't even know where to start. And I'm usually figuring it out from scratch, and that process can take, depending on the look I'm going for and what I'm trying to do, it can take up to an hour and I'm burning through material to figure out what it is. And I wanna try something new. Is I'm going to start picking products or materials that I haven't used very often and I haven't saved or, you know, logged the settings of any kind and start doing a series where I take a material and I, I show you what I do to figure out the settings to encourage you to take a chance and try to figure it out. Because if you do that and you take that time, you will learn infinitely more. And the reason for this is just because I like this specific setting on my specific machine doesn't mean that you're gonna like the way it turns out. I may be going for a completely different look than what you want to do for your customers. So understanding the process is way better for your growth as a business. So for today, we're gonna focus on Slate. I got these off of Amazon. They are coasters that have little feet on them. I'm actually going to be testing the underside because you can hide it when you put it down. But I'm gonna put a card to a video where I focused on how I do my material settings tests. I'll, I'll show you real quick again what I'm doing. For this video, I'm going to focus on the Epilogue Fusion Edge, which is a 60 watt machine, and I will probably do it on the 30 watt maker as well. But we're gonna engrave this, try to figure out some settings, and I'll share those with you. As we're going through this, I encourage you to try this as well and test it for yourself to see what results you get. I'd love to see you guys share these tests over at my community, lasersmadesimple.com slash community. Post a picture there. I wanna see you guys try this for yourself because I think you will learn a lot from this process. The other thing I encourage you to do is as you're doing these tests, I typically save my samples somewhere. So for good example, I actually have a coin that I've done sample tests on. I also have a whoop, bottle opener that I did on the fiber. You can see how much testing I typically go through on a new material to figure out what I wanna do. So make sure you're saving those tests because they will come in handy in the future. So real quick, let's jump onto the computer and I will show you what I'm gonna do. When I'm doing a test, I actually have a whole folder dedicated to this, but you go under the epilogue job manager if you have an epilogue. If you don't, there's probably something on your laser software for you to generate a similar test. But click on the generate tab. And here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the default size and I'm going to keep the 10 rows and 10 columns. Now over here on the process type, it is going to be engrave. 
I would like to try to find a setting in a single pass. Now, some materials you can do this. So slate, you know, leather, leatherette, acrylic. If you're doing a cast acrylic, you can usually find a setting with one pass. If you're doing something like a multiply acrylic, it may take multiple passes to get a clean result. So it all depends on the material you're using. The main two levers that I usually deal with on a CO2 laser are power and speed. Now, I probably don't need 100% power. I'm probably going to need more than 1% power. So power, I'm actually going to range this from 5. And typically, I like to go in increments. So 5, 10, 15, 20, or you know, 5, 15, 25, something like that. And usually, that's just to keep the numbers somewhat sane but for the sake of argument here i'm gonna go to 75 to see what happens speed i don't want to go super slow because the whole purpose of having a laser for engraving is throughput so i want to try to keep my speed as high as i can in order to get that throughput out so i'm going to range my speed from 40 to 100 to see what happens if i scroll down here the resolution, I never usually go above 400 unless it's something extremely detailed. And dithering, honestly, it just depends. I usually leave a default of, say, Jarvis or Stucky. Most of the time, this shows up in photos a lot. Not so much in general engraving text type stuff. But you will see some differences if you go into like grayscale with glass and things like that. And that's it. So I'm just going to name this slate test for now and hit save and then go into it by double clicking. You can see that my machine is already there. I'm actually going to shrink this a little bit because I want to fit it onto the coaster. An important part to keep in mind here is I've already got the material set up in the machine and I've already focused it. If you don't focus it, your camera view will not be good. And I don't care about centering this that much, so I'm just going to leave it there. You'll see on the right all of the different colors of the rainbow, because each color gets assigned the different speeds and powers and allows you to do that grid. This new generate option saves a lot of time from manually setting those like I had to in the past. Then we just go to the quick print. It'll send it over to the laser and we will go machine it. I went ahead and ran the slate test on both the edge and the maker. All in all, I probably spent about an hour trying to figure out which settings I like the best. So on the back of this, you can see this is the edge results. And then on the front is the maker. So the maker, I went ahead and let it engrave a little bit bigger. But now that I've done this test, I'm gonna go ahead and share those settings with you. So for the maker, <laughs> that's the one I'm looking at, the resolution is 400 DPI. This is also the same for the edge. The speed is 60%, the power was 91.11%. This is because I'm using that test grid and it automatically calculates things. If you're using the round 90%, you'll be fine. The dithering was Jarvis, and that's pretty much all you need to know for this one. When it comes to the Edge, which is the 60 watt machine, the resolution, like I said, was 400 DPI. Speed was 53%, the power is 67%, and the dithering is Jarvis as well. 
So this will give a nice white look on the slate coaster. I went ahead and engraved a design with the settings on the edge to show you what it looks like. And this is how it turned out. So nice white look on the slate background and it doesn't have a lot of depth to it. It's very subtle. It won't make it difficult to clean this in any way. I've actually cleaned this with alcohol and wiped it down and it looks perfectly fine. But there we go. That's pretty much how I figure this stuff out is I just try it and see what happens. And then I choose one that I think looks okay. I will keep this coaster around so that I can refer back to the grid if I wanna get a variation. So say that I have a design, I want two or three different looks in that design. I can refer back, change the settings and get a completely different look. But that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully this was helpful. If you want to see other materials, put those in the comments below because I'll be looking to do more of these in the future. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you know when I come out with new videos. Check out my Instagram, at Maker Experiment, where I share things along the way. But I wanna thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and I'll see you in the next one.